Hi everyone, it's Em and Liv and we're your Meta Sidekicks. If you're new to the podcast, I just need you guys to know that my name's Liv. Em, say hi. No. And uh, we're psychic mediums, twin flames, best friends, and uh, king of all dad jokes, as well as towels. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, I, what, I said we're psychic mediums? Yeah. Yeah. That's all you really you need to know. got it all covered. If you want to listen to some uh, twin flame psychic mediums talk about everything metaphysical, paranormal, spiritual, and in between, you're in the right spot. If not, maybe it's something you'll like. Stick around. Yeah. Hopefully Liv edits this next because uh, we just released a video uh, where we react to Sam and Colby's Sally house. Oh, yeah. We did do that. It was fun. <laughs> Honestly. Was it? It made me sick. Uh, well, I used to watch paranormal investigation stuff when I was little. And uh, I don't know. I just kind of stopped because it, it scares me. <laughs> Why does it scare you? I don't know. It's spoopy. Also, I don't like how people just yell at things all the time oh. and get like cranky. I'm well, a very I mean... soft soul, so <laughs> I don't like when people yell in general. But if you haven't listened to our last podcast, we talked about Amityville Horror, and it was the part one. So we talked about the crime section, and then this is going to split the second part, you know, a week after this one comes out. So... Next week, we're going to be doing the paranormal stuff, but... Of Amityville? Yeah. Yeah. Part two. But it was my first time doing, like, I don't know, really in-depth medium stuff on a location or a famous haunted location. So uh, it was interesting because they gave me all of the information, and then we filmed that a few weeks ago, and then I just started getting all, like, it explained to me throughout the last few weeks after we recorded it. So that's one of the things I wanted to talk about in this podcast. <laughs> oh, all the spoopy stuff that you perceived? Yeah, because they basically, because I'm new to being like a psychic medium, but I'm not fully developed in all of the like figuring out what's what and what's my thoughts and what's their thoughts kind of deal. You're in the spiritual target section picking out a training bra for your mediumship. <laughs> My first training bra. Was, you know how that like what was we're it? talking about training bras. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know the the little monkey thing that used to be really popular. The little character that was like monkey it was like monkey Joe or banana Joe or something. No idea. I have no idea. About. What it was. <laughs> well, there was that Lisa Frank thing, right? Yeah. It was like the monkey version of Lisa Frank, and that was my first training bra. It had a monkey on it, and it was blue and white, and there was bananas. I'm glad you remember that. And I really loved it. Well, yeah. It's like a big thing when you're a girl to get like a training bra. Oh, it was traumatic. I remember zero of it. Oh, I, no, it was super traumatic. Trauma. Because like what? Middle school girls like start wearing bras and stuff. And I like wasn't a thing for me. And then, well, you're like in the gym in the, what is it? The locker room and all the girls are like, look at my padded lacy bra. And I'm like, <laughs> let me put on my brother's tube socks that I inherited God. from him because they don't fit him anymore. And then just walk out of here in shame. I can't talk about bras on the internet in our podcast. It was training bras and Axe body spray. If you were a dude and you had Axe body spray, you were like, oh, man. But we were like 10. <laughs> Maybe wow. 11. So, anyways. It makes so, sense. It's a metaphysical training bra. You're in the spiritual gosh. section of the bed, bath, and the beyond. You are a towel. So, <laughs> during that, they were giving me all, like, basically the pieces to the puzzle. However... I'm not, you know, very good at this. So I'm like, these are pieces of puzzles. I don't know how they fit together. Is this how puzzles work? That type of thing. So I got a lot of jumbled information. But over the last few weeks, they were like, remember when we said this? This is why. And remember all of these other things that we gave you the pieces to and you didn't know how to put them together? Well, here's how you do it. That's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. And... I think I should preface really quick. What? That. For the people that only got through the beginning of the, if you're new to this, this is what we do. Oh. You know, a true crime and paranormal podcast and like content on the interwebs is super, super cool, right? I'm into it. I like the paranormal. I like to listen to paranormal podcasts, but again, watching Plus things. For whatever reason, watching things, because you can't watch the paranormal either. Yeah, it scares me. I don't you like literally scary movies. can't. Yeah, I can't. It's really bad. You can't see paranormal things, but for some reason, watching it on TV is scary to you. Well, yeah, because I can see the paranormal things that are happening. Mm -hmm. So like, anyways, 
<laughs> em and I take those true crime and paranormal podcasts and content to the next level because we are mediums. So not only are you learning about the stuff like you would in other forms of content, but you're getting the mediumistic side of all of that content. So that's what she's talking about. Since yeah. we've started Meta Psychics, she's learned that she's a psychic medium. I have always understood that I was a psychic medium, or at least from a very young age, although M is now, what, you're 13? <laughs> no, I'm 16. Oh, yeah, she just turned 16 <gasps> yesterday, guys. Wish her a happy birthday. Um, Jesus. And she's just having the spiritual spanking of a lifetime, realizing that she can talk to dead people and spiritual beings. So when she did the Amityville thing for part one and two, instead of me being the thing talking to stuff, blindly because she doesn't know anything when we do these things what is it we call them like reactions haunted places something like that well it's a famous haunted locations there we that go we, uh try to read into as psychic mediums yeah and then the other one who did the research and knows things explains what actually happens but the other one goes so. into it blindly yeah so i went into it blindly literally know nothing about the amityville horror and they were giving me very specific pieces of the puzzle but because i am not as good at this weird getting information from nowhere kind of thing <laughs> it's not that you're not good you just haven't done it as long yeah it's like discernment that's like what i'm trying to get to like the developing of why am i getting this information who is this information from why do i like how do i interpret this information that kind of thing is there a waffle actually in my pocket or is it yours so the other day i was Scrolling TikToks as one does. No. <laughs> no. TikTok gives me anxiety now. No. Continue. Well, I found this one TikTok and the guy was talking about Naruto. And he was explaining how in Naruto there is this clan of people. I'm trying I'm going to explain the entire thing. So if you're like watching Naruto. Spoiler alert, if you have no idea what Naruto is, here it is. So Naruto is a TV series where ninja are basically learning how to fight in battle type of thing. And I saw this TikTok where they were talking about this clan of people. And this clan of people have like a special ability to, you know, they have really strong eyes. And it makes them able to see the moves of whoever they're fighting before they actually happens. I thought it meant that their eyes could do deadlifts for them. Or something. Because, like, <laughs> being a ninja takes a lot of physical fortitude, right? I'll just yeah. pop my eyeballs out and be like, do these crunches for me. So this clan of people is called or referred to as the Uchiha clan. So they're all related by blood. However, there is this one person who was the brother of one of the main characters. His name's Itachi. He supposedly killed his entire clan by himself. He was the sole killer of the entire clan. And for most of the series, that is like the fact. This man was evil. He killed everyone except for one person, which was Sasuke, who's the main character. Sasuke! Wow, she had to move away from the microphone to do that. You got to do it. Come on. Naruto! There we go. <laughs> so... With that being said, it was weird because this idea of Itachi eradicating his entire family, I actually got that piece of information during our YouTube video. I say, oh my god, they're telling me it's just like Sasuke in the Uchiha clan where Itachi kills his entire family and he's the sole killer of his entire family, allegedly. That was initially what i thought this was about however in this tiktok this man was talking about how further into the series there is information brought about how the killings of the uchiha actually happened and why they happened and itachi had help mm -hmm. so itachi was not the sole killer of his entire clan he had another person whose name is toby who killed the people that are on the front lines. And they then started giving me more information once I saw this TikTok that was like, imagine that Itachi is Butch from the Amityville Horror. And Butch was the one that killed the, like, 
immediate family because that's what Atachi did in his like story. He killed his immediate family, the people that were most connected to him. His mom and dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and Butch killed his mom and dad. Presumably. Well, supposedly. What they, were, what they were telling me was that he killed the people that were closest to him. The people that were hard for him to kill. So to me, that seems like it was the children. But I could be wrong. Interesting. Yeah. And I think that's why they were so passionately killed or like how Don was so passionately killed because that would be his Sasuke. So then do you think Don is the one that killed the parents? No, I think there's another guy. I still think there's another guy. Oh, you think there's guy. a Toby? Yes, I okay. think there's a Toby because I tell you that there was someone that was very skilled in killing people. I think it's that guy. Mm. Because I think he was the one that uh, did it for the parents. Ah. And I feel like the kids knew that it was going to happen. However, they didn't know that things went south and that it got worse. Interesting. But, yeah, I feel like... Whoever this other man is that came into the house that helped him was the one that helped kill his, like, parents. I think he also had a hand in it, but I feel like it was mostly the other guy. Butch. Yeah. Well, the other guy, not Butch. Oh, the other guy. I don't know who the other guy is, per se. Yeah. But, yeah. Weird. It was super weird. Yeah, I know. You sent me that text, and I was like, weird. I know you say nothing back to it. And I was like, I just poured my heart and soul out. You gave me one word. Oh yeah. I don't know how to deal with it. Murder stuff makes me upset. So I like, mm, I don't know. Even just recording those podcasts were hard for me. I know it's what the people want. (laughs) But yeah, it was interesting. I also said in the video at some point you were asking me when it happened And they were showing me the sun was about to go down and everything was golden, which was dumb because a few days after that, I was like, wait, everything was golden, like the golden hour, which happens an hour before sunset. So I saw them leaving the house an hour before the sunset. And I think in your story, you say something about him going to the bar early evening. But I don't remember for for fact on that. Yeah, I don't remember because the way I remember reading it was it wasn't a, supposedly he massacred his whole family at like three o'clock in the morning. But again, I don't understand how you go to the bar at three That's in the morning because isn't yeah, that right. when last call is? I mean, I don't know. That was a while ago. So maybe the bars were open all night, you know, in the 70s. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. The whole thing just makes me feel nauseous. And I don't like reading Butch because. Yeah, that whole thing with his sister was disjointed. Yeah, it's really hard because it's not from somebody that I think has mental clarity. So, well, yeah, I feel like he may have had mental things going on, but I also feel like there is a dark thing manipulating that. Yeah, taking advantage of it, but makes me sad. But yeah, we wanted to talk about like ghost investigation in this video Mm -hmm. because we just created a video about Sally House because. Liv and I, or me, I don't know if Liv actually wants to do this. We want to create a team to hopefully go on ghost hunts, but uh, it's still hypothetical in the works kind of thing. Yeah, we need, uh, what was it, 100 100 patrons to get ghost hunting gear, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. So We might do that before then, and then just get more when we hit the 100. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, goodness. Yeah. Because I think it'll be good for, uh, like, content. Seeing us go to like haunted locations and then seeing videos. We could also do live streams from there. Oh, for sure. I'm quite sure it's what people want. However, once I learned that as a medium, I don't have to be in the room to read things. I was like, sick. Yeah, it's just weird to me because technically they come to you and are in the room with you anyways. So I know. No, I get it. I'm not saying it's (laughs) rational at all. Because a lot of people don't think that it's rational for me to say that spirits can talk to me over Zoom. But again, it it is once you listen to my explanation of how mediumship works. But yeah, because Liv is Liv is nervous. Yes, it is. It's it's spoopy. It freaks me out. You know. Yeah, I also want to do like collabs with maybe people who have ghost investigative channels of some sort. Well, yeah, that's why we added Sam and Colby. 
Mm-hmm. You can't say that we did a reaction video and be like, oh, no, we weren't actually trying to get their attention. Are you kidding well, me? Well, there there's a lot of people that react to Sam and Colby's videos. Oh, really? Yeah, but yes. they're not us. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, there's one, there's a YouTuber that, they're two psychics that react to Sam and Colby's videos. But they're not mediums. They say they're mediums. They talk to spirits, and the spirits give them information. Mm, then they should say that they're psychic mediums, not psychics. <laughs> Well, YouTube. No one knows what that means. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. I hate when you put psychic on things for our our. Uh, what it's is because it? that's YouTube what people titles. look up. Oh no, I get it. <laughs> okay. I get it. I don't know. You'll have to show me that video. Yeah, they have an entire still- channel where they react to ghost events investigations. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think if I I would just deal with comedy, deal with everything with comedy. If we want to do an actual ghost investigation. <laughs> I know, it would be like the LaLaurie Mansion well, where you literally shake. <laughs> it depends on what souls I'm talking to, because a lot of the times when I'm talking to souls, I will take on characteristics or things that they do, which is interesting. Since we're talking about ghost investigations and, you know, going places, it just makes me think about physically being somewhere and around more than just one person. It's not like a one-on-one reading that I'm talking to, like, family members for. Mm-hmm. This is like, I'm just letting souls speak to me for themselves basically which I guess souls already do but it's not like a family type of thing you know where usually all of my readings are for like family members or people that they know or friends there's an you association. do house readings you do house readings we do the thing on metapsychics what thing on metapsychics where you respond to or react to like stories of famous haunted locations like Amityville Horror yeah I don't know. It just, it may, it's been making me think, you know, the the past couple TikToks that we posted too of, you know, a trans medium and a physical medium. And I categorize myself as a mental medium because of the whole thoughts, images, feelings, and emotions. But if you're a mental medium and you have all, what, six clairs like you and I, yeah. specifically me, I don't know how you feel about yourself, but... <sighs> Well, it is kind of like I do go into a trance sometimes because if I'm trying to talk there's a difference specifically to somebody yeah I will in order to help them like the other week I was doing a reading and this one soul really wanted me to say one sentence but the way I do readings it wasn't conducive for them so I literally was like okay give me a second and I chilled out and I let them say the whole sentence through my head so that I could see it and then speak it as it was like written in my mind. And when I said it, I said it like them. Yeah. Yeah. And then. That is still a mental medium. Okay. And then what is it? Like house readings too. I'm not actually touching things, but when I see a certain object, I can be like, there's this, this, and that with it. Yeah. I didn't think I really understood what men- or trans mediumship was until I watched someone do trans mediumship. Okay, how's it different? I really want to know. So for trans mediumships, you literally go into almost like a dreamlike state. So they will sit there and literally like their eyes will be closed. Everything will just like go and flow into them. And they'll basically, it's like, I don't know how to explain this without making you more confused. But it's almost like the soul is speaking for them or the soul is giving them information because they're in this like altered state but you as a mental medium you are getting your analytical mind out of the way that's what you are viewing as you're like trans like you're being in a trance it's kind of like in you're in a meditative state where this other person that's in a trance is more in a like like an altered state of mind almost it's like uh being in a trance being like hypnotized kind of state of mind if that makes sense they hypnotize themselves in order to let spirit speak to them it's kind of like taking a step further to what you do does that make sense kind of it's almost like as if they were like asleep and speaking to you like a possession (laughs) no (laughs) i don't believe in possessions i well yeah then you could just call a possession a trance because something isn't speaking through you manipulating you you aren't there anymore yeah but people view possession as someone taking over your body and that's not what's happening (laughs) well then what is happening i think you need to watch someone do trans mediumship i think it would freak me out (laughs) i don't think so (laughs) 
I don't know. Because I feel like you have like a negative connotation because you think it's someone stepping into their body and doing things like in a possession type of way. Yeah. It, it, mm. Well, it's not like stepping into them. It's just speaking through them. Like yeah. I, I can do that without having a soul literally just manipulate me into speaking like them. It's like they move yeah, but this, into their body for a second. This person needs to be in that alter state of mind to get the information that you do when you're in a meditative state. And I know that that's like... Those two words mean pretty much the same thing. Yeah. But there is, it's a step further. It's literally almost like being hypnotized. You would not refer to yourself as being hypnotized when you're like talking to people. Do they remember what they said after the trans mediumship session? Yeah, you can remember what you say and do at, when you're hypnotized as well. Can you? I thought the yes. whole point of hypnoti- hypnosis was the, to not remember. The hypnotist can make you not remember. And say, you're not going to remember any of this. Poof, you're awake. Okay. Have you ever watched someone get hypnotized? No. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) No. You're funny. (laughs) (laughs) I just don't understand. Yeah, that's the best way that I can explain it because they're not necessarily hypnotized, but they're in like an altered state of mind so that spirits can speak through them. But the reason why it's different than being a mental medium is you can go easily back and forth. Okay, and they can't. So, like, if they're walking around, they can't just have a conversation with a spirit. They have when to, like, I say, literally power down, like, Windows 97. Yeah. Okay. When I say back and forth, you go back and forth between your analytical mind and your mediumship mind. They kind of sit in mediumship mind. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then what is... So, physical mediums have to touch something. I guess I've never watched a physical medium do anything. Okay. Because if I just look at something and it's an object, I can tell you something. I don't actually have to touch it, though. Yeah, but I feel like there's... I feel like some of our patrons are kind of like that. When they touch things, the energy, like, flows through their fingertips. It's very, like, clairsentient. Weird. But maybe that's what physical mediums. is Oh, they're explaining it to me. (laughs) Are they? (laughs) Yeah, they're saying you're a radio, but you can control your dial. Everyone else is a radio, (laughs) but they're only on one channel. Yes. So if they're not wholeheartedly plugged into that channel, it's not going to work. And for physical mediums, they actually have like your radio that like gets uh, like a calculator, like the ones that are solar powered. They're like physical mediums have to be plugged in. Yes. And they have to be on a specific channel and trans mediums don't have to be plugged in. It's just that the dial is always on the same thing. So they just have to turn it on and off. There's not like yours is a sliding scale of whatever frequency you want to tune into, which is also why you're able to speak to spiritual beings and not just dead things. Yeah. That's why you're having a hard time of explaining it because you can do both. (laughs) You don't need that like level of connection. It's weird. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that they could use my radio. And yeah, I'm when glad Emma that I they, say they, we're talking about our spirit, spirit guides, guides or like spirit in general. Yeah. I'm glad that they stepped in to explain it because I don't know how to use the correct words to explain it because I know what I'm talking about. However, I know what I'm talking about. I don't know how to put it into words. <laughs> yeah. No, the dial makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. They're like, yours is just you move your dial and you're like, you want to listen yes. to 60s rock? Cool beans. You want to listen to some biggie and hip hop? Cool beans. Yes. And I very much did not understand any of the mediumship differences until I literally watched a trans medium, sh- a trans medium work. And they don't even know they're a trans medium. So. Weird. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm just like nervous because it'll be, you know, I'm just there. So whatever it is that they have to say, they have to say. And it freaks me out because sometimes people can be angry. I want to say one of the most stressful readings that we ever did was The Conjuring House, for sure. That was really stressful. Why? (laughs) Because when, what's his name came in? I think his name is Charles, but we refer to him as Lenny in the video. Oh, you mean Lizzie Borden. Yeah. Sorry. No, I was the like Conjuring the, House. The Conjuring Lizzie House. Borden. No, Lizzie Got Borden you. was like the hardest thing for me because when well, he yeah. came in, I honestly was very scared because there's this huge giant looming dude yeah. that is pissed and I'm afraid to go places and have people that are there that are pissed and I'm sure we're going to get flack for this, but there's a lot of paranormal investigators that just like run around with like meta not metaphorically 
pots and pans and bang them together and yell at the sky and it just makes them more annoyed so I'm well, yeah. afraid that we go somewhere and someone does that then I'm going to be the one that's perceiving actually what's happening and it's going to be hard for me to be like can you please stop making all of this noise and being rude because there's this I'll man standing it. next to me and he's fizzucking pissed and I have to deal with it so let's just calm down for a second I'm going to sit on the floor and try not to throw up while eating pizza <laughs> And we'll see what he wants to say. Get your little spirit box out and like be <laughs> quiet and then I'll be the other spirit box and we'll see what what happens. But like that's what I'm more worried about is there being like piss things that run at me mm. and are like ah! and then I have to like be okay with it because I'm always okay with it. And then at, like after the fact, you're like, I didn't know that you were that scared. And I was like, actually, I was shitting your pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid that souls are going to like try to jump into me. That's happened once or twice before, or I'm going to have to deal with a soul that's physically here, that's pissed for multiple reasons. And it's just going to be like very emotional and very a lot. And people don't necessarily want that as a form of entertainment. They want the people that bang pots and pans and shout at the, at the walls. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I'm afraid that. But that's not how our content is currently. Yeah. So why would it change? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just worried about it. Going places and having angry people or souls. It's not that they're angry. It's just that they're misunderstood yeah. for a long time. And then I have to deal with centuries of misunderstanding and emotions spiritually in like 10 minutes. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it would be fun. I'll deal with it with comedy like I do everything else. <laughs> yeah. And then after the fact, you'll be like, did Olivia poop her pants? I'll be like, no, it's fine. I, I'm actually wearing a diaper. I was prepared. No, you'll be fine. <laughs> you just got to find a guide that will help you go through the house. That is my plan. Ah, uh, yeah, there usually is one. Yeah. Uh huh. So. Because that's how your mom dealt with it when she went to that asylum that we talked about on one of our podcasts. Yeah. She didn't do it consciously either. <laughs> that man just stepped forward for her. Yeah. I think I would want to go through all of the rooms of whatever place we go to first mm -hmm. without people telling me anything and like write things down for each room. And then after the fact, have people go in that are paranormal investigators to see what they have in each room. And then I would like to just chill out. And once they do their little thing, I'll go back with whatever notebook I have and I mean we don't even have to do the notebook then we can do the notebook later I just want to go into the rooms before they do to see what I have to feel or say about things and then have them do free range of whatever and if there's like a certain room that they want to learn more about or like their equipment has a whole bunch of like beepy noises or whatever. Like a lot beepy of noises. a lot of tacos are done. <laughs> oh God. They'll be like, oh my God, can you come over here? And I'll be like, yeah, but just like chill out for a second. And then I'll tell them like what's going on. You know, I don't know. I guess I, I would don't just... know what you're talking about. You're talking about if we're collabing with someone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or even if, if like with our own investigations, I'd rather like, cause we're going to have people on our team help us and they're going to be using you know, all of the doodads and whatnot, but like, I want to go in the rooms without all of the doodads and whatnots going off before. Why? Because I don't want to be influenced by any of the little beepy bop boop toaster strudels are done noises. <laughs> I just want to like, listen to what people have to say, soul and spirit wise, and then let whatever people want to do, do with their little toasters. <laughs> what do you think? I don't think it's going to work that way. I think there's just going to be stuff set up because they usually set it up when it's still light outside and they just have it set up. But does and it then, have to be turned on? What? The stuff that they set up. I mean, I guess not, but it would be cooler to see it already set up while you're talking to things. <laughs> I guess people so. are physical beings. I know. And that's the thing that bothers me about it. <laughs> well, yeah. It's like in that uh, one video that we did with uh, Janelle when we went to her haunted house. And we we're like, let's do a spirit box with the man that lives in your house or the man spirit that lives in your house. Yeah, and it didn't do anything, though. Well, that's because we didn't know how to use it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and it was a cell phone. <laughs> that is true. Mm -hmm. And he was like, this is going to be really cool. And you were like, this is going to be really cool. 
And it wasn't. Because <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Yeah. It'll be like that. <laughs> what? I don't know. We're going to go somewhere and there's like a little boy that's going to be there. Because <laughs> I can see it on my left hand side. When are we going to go? Oh, probably not until the fall. Yeah. I need to look at some stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if and when that happens. Saul legend, but also, okay, I have another question. Okay. <laughs> Is it just our team going or are we going with someone the little boy won't tell me. Oh, he's tell like six you. or seven. Tell him why not. <laughs> uh, he says it ruins all the fun. I'm so tired I know. of hearing little children feet that are like little bear children feet running around. It's fucking creeping me out. Why? Between your niece yesterday and this <laughs> little boy and just all the other creepy Live. little spiritual things. I can't. You're going to have children. What Ugh. are you going to do then? <laughs> I'm going to make them wear socks. And when they say, Mommy, can I take my socks off? I'm going to say, you cannot run Listen, in the house. They're not going to ask. <laughs> I'm going to duct tape the socks onto their legs. That's not going to work either. Yes, it will. No, it won't. <laughs> I'm going to make them wear footy pajamas everywhere. Oh, my god! I gosh. can't take them off. Ugh. Yeah. It grosses me out. I need to find equipment. What kind of equipment do you want to get? We probably need like some sort of spirit box that are like, hey, this is me. Well, if you're going to get a spirit box, you got to get one of the super spooky, scary ones that go chook, 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 in the background. I Those think, are the scariest ones possible. If you really well, want to make me throw up because I'm so scared, <laughs> get one of those. I don't think you know. Do you know how they work? Mm, no. Um. So most spirit boxes, they use like radio frequencies. Oh, like my fucking brain does? <laughs> Sorry. Well, Yeah. <laughs> And they just pick up the, like, words in different radio stations. Interesting. So that's why you got static, because it's trying to find the right, like, frequency. Mm. And then it picks the right word. Interesting. So that's why it's like that. So most likely a spirit box we get will be like that, unless we get a, like, something else that's well, no, not there, referred to as a spirit box per se there's like different types of ones and the ones that make that horrible noise are like different than the other ones they're yeah like that's newer. the one we would get <laughs> uh, i'm telling you right now i'm gonna cry because i'll be so scared also do I, did I tell you that i don't like being in the dark i know it's because you can't see you can't see in the dark right um, like not like are you night blind i don't like driving at night I don't know if I'm night blind. I don't know. If we turned all the lights off, would you be able to see anything? Probably not. Okay, if we turned all the lights off, I would still be able to see things. Because <laughs> I have unusually good vision. Mm -mm. And I'm hypersensitive to, like, bright things. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that would also be another reason why I'm not afraid of the dark, because I can see in the dark. Yeah, I I mean, I'll put my big girl pants on for sure, but I'm going to be scared the whole time. <laughs> uh, I Well, I don't know. That's just me today. I have a lot of anxiety today, too. Radio yeah, sweep. I don't know. I think it's the radio sweep ones. I don't think it will be that scary. I think you're going to be in a weird location that may be kind of dark, but we have a big flashlight. I think I'm just psyching myself out. Yeah. It's not going to be like, like I do with shots. It's not like we're going to go to a haunted house that like there are people, actual physical people there to scare you. Yeah, we're but gonna that's go, what my brain is telling me. <laughs> we're literally going to go to a dark house and we could turn the lights on if we want. And that's literally it, except it's haunted. <laughs> yeah. And people are like, it's fine. I'm using a baby needle. You don't need to cry. It's just the flu shot. Look, do you see how small this needle is? You can barely see it. And I look like except, SpongeBob when he's about to take his boating test. Except you're not having harm done to you by needle. <laughs> SpongeBob during the boating test. I just need a big toe the whole thing. <laughs> I think it's going to be way boringer than you think it's going to be. If we go on a when when we go on a paranormal investigation, oh okay, can I please wear a giant cowboy hat with a flower and put my walkie-talkie under it? You can wear whatever you want. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so spirit box. And if anybody keeps asking us why the weird ginger girl in the corner wearing a ten-gallon hat keeps saying ten pinky toe hat. or big toe, pinky just tell out big toe. Just, just tell them to leave me alone. <laughs> just give them a lemon. 
<laughs> we yeah. asked the uh, guy, the lady at McDonald's today for a lemon, a whole ass lemon, because Liv Liv doesn't Liv is scared of like witchy things, but for some reason now she is doing a witchy thing with a lemon. I've lost. I've exhausted all other resorts. <laughs> I really have. I've exhausted all all things. So I'm going to try a lemon. She's going to put a lemon in a freezer and all of her problems will be solved. We'll see. I don't believe it, but I like You have to believe it. That's how it works. I, there's literally nothing else I could try at all. Well, the next thing. <laughs> so, a spirit box. What are the things that I want to put? We can get an EMF reader. I'm not sure what an EMF reader does. I think it turns colors. Yeah, it's like it's one of those red, green, and yellow, yeah. and it's and electromagnetic an frequencies. Yeah. And then EMF meter. We should probably get some sort of motion sensor thing. I think we should just get a, a magic eight ball. A magic eight ball. Or some alphabet soup. I know, but I feel like- Can we please bring some alphabet soup? <laughs> God, if you're a patron and want us to do divination readings on ran- with random objects, please join Patreon. Yeah, we already are going to. It's going to be great. I'm really excited about it. But I feel like a uh, spirit manipulating an eight ball is a hard thing. <laughs> what about cupcakes? What about cupcakes? You throw a cupcake at the wall, and if it's you're sticks- not throwing a cupcake what? at my wall. <laughs> Why not? Because I don't want to clean up cupcake. You're Italian. <laughs> what about some spaghetti? That's how my boyfriend used to figure out if it was cooked. He would legitimately throw it against the wall and see if it's stuck. And I was like, they have a like a set time that cooks it, so you don't have to throw it at the wall to I, know it's done. <laughs> <laughs> what if you just throw the entire pot at the wall? That would uh probably decrease the amount of food that you can eat. <laughs> clean food. Yeah, clean food. It's some fiber. It's motion detector. <laughs> Do we want to get a scary motion detector? Sam and Colby has that weird coffin-shaped one that plays scary music. I don't know how to find a motion detector at this point in time. Um, but I don't know. They also have, you know, those cat balls that Sam and Colby have. They're yeah. actual balls for cats. You touch them and they like change colors. They okay. Turn the lights. The lights change colors. Hmm. That could be emotional. Or anything. <laughs> I will actually probably be playing with it. <laughs> yeah. Be like, it's haunted. It's just live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just in there like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Do you know that they have, um, I think it's like a spirit box, but they put the spirit box inside of a teddy bear. So the teddy bear talks. That's horrifying. They yeah. really try They're to like make it as horrifying as possible. Oh, no, no, no. Possible. There's a reason in the description. Oh, because they want kids to talk to it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, I get that. But I'm also saying you don't need to have it in a teddy bear <laughs> I know, for that's a what kid I to think too. it's fun. Yeah. Literally, when we did the Sam and Colby reaction video, that one kid was like, let me put, oh, no. Oh, I can't evil. say this. What? Mm. Anyways, long story short, I was watching a paranormal investigation, and these people were trying to get spirits from the place that we already covered. Um, 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 the Queen Mary. Yeah. And it's so cute because remember I was talking about how there's a little boy who runs around on board and he like knows everybody's secrets because his dad used to work on the ship or something and he would yeah. be there. Uh huh. Which is really, really cute. But in one of the um, scenes that they were playing on the paranormal investigation, there was this little boy and they were holding like the spirit box for them to like talk into or whatever. Okay. And um, there was a guy that answered a question and. <laughs> He said something inappropriate, but long story short, the thing was, is I saw this little boy on his tiptoes because he's like seven or eight, and he was like holding his hands up, trying to like put his face into the spirit box to talk into it, and then they got the voice of a little boy answering. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. So like, you don't need to put it in a teddy bear because no matter what you're talking to. Um, well, yeah. Person wise, I mean, if you give that thing to a little kid, they're either going to be like, "That's weird. I'm not talking into it," or they're be like, "Oh, look, it changes colors." Yeah, most people don't think like that. Like most people are like, "What if they speak a different language? How are we going to translate it?" And you like, just have a psychic medium like Em and yeah. I there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's not. They can speak in a universal language. <laughs> yeah, but spirit boxes won't translate it. So if they're actually speaking in French. Well, yeah. That's just what they're choosing to speak to you with, but they could. But no, be what they're else. saying is like they need, they themselves 
need to ask the questions in a different language in order for them, the spirit to understand. Oh, yeah. No, that's not yeah. how that works. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> they know what you're thinking before you say it. Yeah. It's so funny. I put that on a, t- on a tweet. Follow me on Twitter. Um, <laughs> follow Metal Psychics on Twitter. No, follow me. No, and follow Meta Psychics. I do both of them. Do Meta Psychics. Oh, uh, anyways. I, I like made a rant thread tweet post because I don't know how Twitter works. And <laughs> it was like, I don't understand why paranormal investigators talk about how certain things that they get on spirit boxes or whatever they're like oh this soul was so intelligent and like knew my name and like knew why we were there and then this other one was like get out and it's like okay well i think they're equating to some spirits some dark spirits don't have like a consciousness necessarily maybe that's what they're talking about i mean it doesn't matter what you're talking to whether it's a dark spirit or human spirit they do have a consciousness it's just whether or not because I, know, I that's was not what people think. <laughs> I was wondering about this because I, we know all souls know, see, hear, and feel everything. However, mm-hmm. I was trying to understand how they sometimes don't seem to know, feel, or feel feel everything. And my spirit guides were telling me that it's kind of like, kind of. I know you're not going to agree with this, huh. like my mediumship, where I can pick and choose what I want to hear and the things I want to understand or know about or not know about. Yeah, they have blocks. Yes, but it's like their own block. So if they want to choose to know everything about you, they will. However, they don't have to. So if they, if people on spirit box readings get like, oh, like, I don't know, some words that are like, why are these people here? Those souls that are talking about that can know why you're here. It's just the fact that they're talking to one another and choosing to not use that information. Because they're still more physical than they are spiritual because they're there. why souls can create their own, like, hell because they think a hell exists and they think they can't go to heaven. Yeah. It creates their own block even as a soul. Yes. Which is why they can't get all the information stating that there isn't a hell and that this place that they created isn't hell, that they can go and do whatever they want within a, a heavenly space. Yeah. So, but I just was wondering because yeah. some people, somebody asked me, like, well, isn't knowing, seeing, hearing, and feeling everything really overwhelming? And I'm like, well, if you were a human. Yeah, but you're not. <laughs> you're a soul. And that's what they explained to me. They're like, it's literally as if you were in a library, but you're not even in a library. It's like you can snap your fingers and a bookcase appears next to you. And you look at the bookcase and you pull out the book out of the bookcase that you want and open it up and it tells you the information that you're looking for. And then you snap your fingers and it's gone. So if you want that information, you're privy to it. However, if you don't want that information, you don't have to do anything with it. That's why people are still prejudiced sometimes in the afterlife because they're privy to the information that could figure out or solve the problem or thing that they had when they were alive. However, they don't want to. So it doesn't matter. Right. It just was wild to me. I never thought about that way. And they answered it. So It's like, well, souls won't talk to you because they're religious. Yeah. Yeah. But some of them have been religious and they're like, dude, this is freaking cool. <laughs> Cause well, they're like, I, I would was be wrong. weirded out. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I really like the souls that are like that. I talked to a woman like that last week. She was really cute. Yeah. The little woman that we did the in person reading for ah. with the compression stockings. <laughs> she was Jesus. like, I would think this is real, but this is pretty cool. <laughs> My God. <laughs> she was adorable. She looked like a little like pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, it was adorable. Yeah, so ghost hunting. Oh, rolls eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, you guys. We're going to do live streams. I'm planning on, I don't know, creating. I don't know if I want a Twitch channel or just a YouTube channel where I stream stuff on. But I'm planning to stream, live stream content. And I want to do things where we go on ghost investigations and do live streams from the haunted locations. If they have internet and things like that. Because I think that would be cool. But I want to create an actual channel where I do these live streams. And it will also consist of, like, other things. Like, I want to create tarot cards. So maybe you watch me create tarot cards. We want to create a fairy garden. So maybe you guys watch us create a fairy garden. That type of thing. I also want to do, like, obviously video games. Because that's what people do when they stream. 
And we just do scary video games. And you then... also need me to play scary video games with you, though, too, because I'm going to be. Oh, exact... you want to? Well, no, 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 I don't <laughs> want to. But I'm telling oh. you, if people want entertainment, that's how you get it, because I will scream. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. That's kind of the point, because I want to take like we want to get an employee that will help us do that. And she will help or she will be on a stream with me because I don't know that Liv wants to. <laughs> Because I want to do scary video games and then, like, do readings when everything is just, like, chaotic. Like, you donate and get a reading, but I'm also playing a video game at the same time. So, you know, I think it's fun time. That is very chaotic. I will also be screaming through the entire video game as well. Uh, I played Slenderman once, and I screamed when I died. Mm -hmm. So you should uh, play a VR game that's scary. It's even more realistic. Kind of like your life. God. (laughs) Kind of like your life. Yeah, kind of like your life. I think that's a dig. It is. <laughs> I was going to say something. I don't remember what it was now. Oh, yeah. When you first told me when we were going for a, our uh, daily lurk around the, the office building, um, you told me and there was like some dude there that you wanted to do uh, paranormal investigations and the dude that came forward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's just some random Joe that was following yeah. M around. I, so I was like, can we do a ghost hunting team? Oh, yeah. And he thought it was hilarious that M thinks that we can, quote unquote, hunt ghosts. Cause he <laughs> it's was, referred to as hunting. <laughs> yeah, because he said, oh, how are you supposed to hunt something that isn't physical, number one? Number two. Just uh, like we hunt the abominable snowman. You don't even hunt things in the first place. You literally <laughs> go to Aldi's and get some chips. So sit down. And three, he thought he was even funnier and showed me the, um, what is it? Uh, Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny, when Al- Elmer Fudd is like, I'm hunting rabbits. So I uh-huh. think that our ghost hunting team should be called Wabbit Hunters. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, it's always wabbit season we can make a t-shirt for that too i think it's funny because yeah paranormal investigators i think is a funnier term too i think it's all just funny but that's just because my reality is you just see them yes <laughs> and it'd so, be like investigating human beings <laughs> yeah you just live in my life investigate me you know, we can just investigate pretty houses because those are the ones that are usually haunted. Oh, uh, I would love to go to a beautiful castle and just listen exactly. to all of the souls that are there. Exactly. I know, but people want to go to like traumatizing places like insane asylums. And We don't have to. I would like to <laughs> not. Our team. We can go anywhere we want. Oh, if we go to a castle and I talk to all of the people that lived there. To find a castle. I would love that. <laughs> Does anybody own a castle? Does anybody that's listening know someone that owns a castle that will let me that is come haunted. talk to all of the people there? But let's get real. If it's a castle, it probably is haunted. Oh, for sure. But it, let's also get real. If I lived in a castle and then died, I would go back and live in that castle as a spirit. Oh, I just want to <laughs> talk to all of the old ladies that live there. I'm sure some of them will be very catty. I'm sure other ones will not be catty. And I just want to listen to what they have to say. I really love as a medium meeting people. And by meeting people, not only the people that are like alive, but mostly the people that are dead. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. our team we can do whatever we want with it yeah that makes me feel better <laughs> people just always want to go to like the horrible places and like i don't mm. i mean we can do that too but also i want to go to see beautiful old houses Ugh, if we could go to like scotland <laughs> and go into the giant beautiful castles i would poop your pants i would not sleep i would just talk to every ghost that's there yeah Every ghost. And if we start doing investigations now, maybe we'll have the chance to actually go across seas. That would be super cool. It'd be really cool. Sam Especially and Colby, Scotland. have you ever been to a princess castle? <laughs> In I Scotland. Like, I would like to go. Well, they went to Dracula's be... castle, which I know is scary. But I like, already talked to it's Dracula. It's still a castle. That's the only castle I know of because I haven't watched all their videos, but you know. Uh Oh, is that why I talked to Dracula? Because you were re- watching their video? Yeah, because I was like, Dracula is real? <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, she like walked up to me and was like, can you tell me the man that's standing next to me? No, I, was like, I came up to you and was like, who was trying to talk to me? Because I'm pretty sure my ears are bleeding and I need it to stop. Please give me the first piece of information so that they stop screaming in both of my ears. Thank you. Yeah, Dracula was the first thing that came to my mind and I thought I was lying. <laughs> Yeah, no, literally. I sat down at my desk at work because we went to lunch and then came back. And when I sat down, I was like, holy crap, make it stop. I think I'm going to have a panic attack. And I went to Dilliv's desk 
because we worked together, and uh, made her talk to whatever was talking to me. And I was like, Nosferatu. <laughs> Which Nosferatu was also in the video. Oh, yeah. He used that. It was pretty funny because SpongeBob is life. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Paranormal hunters. It's wabbit season, people. Let's see what happens. You can help make it happen by joining our Patreon. <laughs> yeah. We also, we went to a, a psychic today. And if you guys are interested in content with a, I don't know what, astrologer? Astrology. On her business card, it says she does astrology, palm reading, numerology. She's very much psychic. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know if we want to do it with her if she wants to do that. But if you guys are interested in that content, we will set it up for you. Let us know somewhere. Because uh, it was cool. She oh, told of us, us about just her doing lives. a reading with her th- with them? With the person? Or just like what? Well, like how we did with Julie, where we talked about Owen. Yeah. It'd be cool to do that for like astrology or numerology, that type yeah. of thing. We like, got to find a cool person like that. Go to some sort of psychic person and they talk about their practice to us, how it works, how they get information, kind of how we did with uh, Emily Garrett and... Uh, a tall Julie. medium, a small medium, and a yeah. A tall M, a small M, and a medium. That's what it was. That was a podcast episode. <laughs> yeah, I like to uh, ask people how they read things. Yeah, it's interesting. And we went to a psychic today, and it was weird. <laughs> she told me how many babies I'm going to have. She told me uh, my business is going to be really good, guys. And uh, she told me about love. I like how you something. say it like you're dying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't what are we going to cover we, next week? We need week? to talk to our Patreon people. Oh, yeah, you're right. I was like, don't end it. We have some things to talk about. Okay, you ready? Yeah. So uh, these are our patrons. And if you guys are interested in joining Patreon as well, there's make a link sure in the, to- in the description. There's a link in the show notes. That's Because we're called. on podcast. But uh, these are our shout outs. These are our currently active Patreon supporters. Sidekicks. Towels. Side gigs. Towels. They all live in the bed, bath, and the beyond. Jordan. wanted to know. Savannah. Trinity. Avery. Cassandra. Anthony. Violet. Peyton. Farina. Allie. Mac. Josie. Autumn. Thias. Victoria. Jenny. Laurel. Brianna. Nate. Bradley. Sandy. Nas. Sherry. Christina. Sushi. Anita. Katie. Charles. Holly. Krista. Flo. Ibby. Malake. Malake. You're a towel. <laughs> Jesus. You all are towels. You are. So, Thank you for listening to our babbling. We hope you liked it. If you didn't, listen to another one. You'll like those ones. <laughs> our next podcast, we're going to be talking about Amityville Part 2, two where two, we talk two, to two. the paranormal stuff and not just the crime stuff, since we uh, dived deep into it earlier in our podcast yeah. today. So check those other podcasts out. Make sure you follow or subscribe or whatever you do on a podcast. Oh, things. you guys need to leave Apple reviews, please. I guess Apple reviews are super, super cool. And we only have seven. Mind you, they're all five star reviews, <laughs> <laughs> but we have seven five star Apple reviews. And if you could tell everyone in your mama and their mama too to leave us an Apple review, we would appreciate it because it'll help get our podcast more uh, viewed. Yeah. I don't know how that, that works. I guess it does. It works really, really well. I mean, we're already starting to like be searched under comedy section, which is honestly the only thing I would need to know is that we are being searched as a metaphysical comedy because that's what this is. My God, uh, yeah, it's very odd that it, that's what we're being com- that's that's what we're coming up as comedy. Yeah, I love it. It's great. It's honestly the only thing I could ask for besides yeah. you God. guys leaving some Apple reviews or Spotify and reviews, whatever Spotify does. I don't think Spotify has reviews, but I could be wrong because I know nothing about podcasts. But if you leave a review on Apple Podcast and you can write words in it, you can. Can you please? write the weirdest things in it that only us would laugh at like give us all of the dad jokes be like the podcast is great here's a dad joke <laughs> mm-hmm. i never knew i was a towel until now my eyes are so wide open and then we'll shout you out in our podcast because we'll think it's funny <laughs> oh yeah the best apple review we'll put it in the next podcast we will <laughs> find we you <laughs> oh no we'll I figure out it. how to get to podcast reviews <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We are your meta kicks. Boo. Are you scared? Yes.
So a castle? Yes, please. You gotta find me a castle, though. Oh. Oh. Okay.